Alright guys, what is going on? We're back down here at the field. Today I'm going to run through a short tutorial video. I'm actually going to revisit my first ever video that I uploaded on YouTube, which was about three years ago now, and it was how to do a drop kick. So we're talking about a drop kick with a ball like this, a rugby ball. You can use it in the game of rugby league or rugby union. Uh, in rugby league it's worth one point, in rugby union it's worth three points. It's a fundamental part of the game. It's extremely difficult to pull off in a game situation. So, so today I'm going to run through four fundamental things to practice so that when you do come upon the opportunity to take a drop goal in the game situation, you're going to be that much more prepared and it might even go over. So, so with that said, my first tip is going to be on hand position. We position your hands on the ball in the movement of the drop kick. Number two is going to be the actual drop of the ball. So how you drop it out of your hands, your hand placement, and where it actually hits the ground, as opposed to where your body is at that time. Tip number three is gonna be on your body position as the ball hits the ground. And tip number four is gonna be the final part of the movement, which is the follow through. This is gonna be where you get your power, where you get your accuracy, and fundamentally, whether the kick is gonna go good or not. So first of all, let's get into tip number one, which is hand position. Personally, I kick off my right foot. So with that said, as far as hand position goes, when you're kicking the ball, whether that be a punt, a place kick, or a drop kick, you're gonna to wanna to be coming in on an angle so that when your foot comes round, the angle of your foot is gonna be off in a straight line where you want the ball to go. So obviously, if we were gonna come in to kick it from a straight angle, and our foot was to come across like it does naturally, it's gonna go that way. What we do, we counteract that by coming in on you know, maybe a 30 to 45 degree angle so that when our foot does come through naturally in that arc, it's gonna come in the direction that we want the ball to go. So with that said, as we come in, we've got the hand position. Now, I'm gonna be coming through with my right foot. I'm gonna want my right hand to be on the top half of the ball, on the outside of the ball. My bottom hand, which is more so a guiding hand, is gonna be on the bottom half of the ball or at least that's how I like to do it. So we'll come in at a 45 degree angle. I'll have my outside hand, my right hand on the top, my left hand, my inside hand on the bottom, and we'll be coming up something like this. So this is the first part of the movement. First of all, the ball comes slightly up and then the drop happens. So as we come through the movement, the top hand stays on the ball as the, as the drop happens. The bottom hand actually comes off it because it's more of a guiding hand. So it's something like this. So when we get to the top of that movement, this hand comes off, the ball stays in this hand, so it's still guided. Okay. So it'll be coming up, this hand comes off, this hand is the complete guiding hand and guides it back down to the ground for the drop. So that is the hand position 101. With that, with that being said, the second part of the drop kick is obviously the drop of the ball. Like I just demonstrated, it's going to be up like this. You're going to take this hand off. You're going to be guiding the ball up and then back down with this hand. What that's going to allow you to do is to drop it as upright as possible. The last thing you want is the ball to land on the ground like this or like this or like this because the connection with the ball is not going to be true and it's not going to give you as much power and as much accuracy as you could get. So I'm only telling you this hand position because at the end of the day, you want the ball to drop as upright as possible. And bringing the ball up like this, and you know, sort of cupping it in this outer hand and then dropping it allows me to keep the ball as upright as possible. You may be different, but like you can see, come up like this and drop it like that. So the ball is being dropped nice, and vertically up and down 
so that it bounces nice and vertically and you get the best connection. All right, so that is the drop of the ball from the hands. When the ball actually hits the ground, you're gonna want it to be within around about a foot to a foot and a half of your leading foot. So once again, I come through, I bring the ball up, I let it go, it hits the ground. I'm gonna be coming through with my left foot planted. So then I can bring this right foot back and generate the power to come through and kick the ball. So with that said, we're gonna be coming through, we're gonna be bringing it up, we're gonna be dropping the ball, and as the ball hits the ground, I'm gonna be taking this first step with my left foot at the same time. And you're gonna want that ball to drop within about a foot to a foot and a half of your leading foot. What that's gonna allow you to do is without even thinking about it, bring through that back leg with a lot of power in that natural curve. Like I said, you're coming in on the 45 degree angle, foot comes through, ball has bounced right there vertically, exactly where you want it. The connection will be as good of a connection as possible and hopefully that drop goal goes exactly how you want it. To get the drop perfect every time, you're actually never gonna get it perfect every time. All you can do is practice, practice, practice. That's all you can do. Tip number four, and the most important, I would say, would be your total body position. So we've got the hand position, we've got the drop of the ball, we've got that leading leg, and we've got the follow through, right? Where is the body? Where is the rest of the body in association to the ball, to your feet, etc.? The one thing you wanna focus on is keeping your head above the ball. Okay, you want to keep your head above where the ball is and where that leading leg is. The last thing you want to do is to be off balance or to be, you know, leaning backwards or leaning to the side or have your head, you know, pointing upwards when you make the contact with the ball because subconsciously that's where the ball is going to go. On the other hand, if you have your head over the top of the ball and you focus on doing that, what that's going to do is it's going to keep your body in line, it's going to keep everything in line and that follow through is going to be so much more accurate and so much more powerful. If my head is over the ball, I'm gonna drop it something like this, okay? If I've got a nice vertical line through my head, through my torso, down my leading leg, what that's gonna allow me to do is keep my head and my torso, it's gonna to be over the top of the ball and I'm gonna get a really nice, solid contact through the ball rather than behind it and up, okay? Because that's what you want. You want the ball to be coming off in a direction like that, probably at around about a 30 degree angle. 45 is too high, 90 is obviously too high, but about 30 degrees would be absolutely perfect. And that would be my four major keys to the drop kick. I really hope you've learned something. One thing I do want to say before I go is that clearly in a game situation it is so much harder than on the practice field. All you can do, all you can do is practice man, that's all you can do. I mean, I've got to give you an example. Let's say if you're in Golden Point in the NRL, these are professional rugby players, all right? These guys do this for a job and they still miss drop kicks. They miss drop kick after drop kick after drop kick. I've seen Golden Point in NRL go from that end to that end to that end, miss, 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 miss. Once again, because a game situation, you never know what's going to happen. And to actually have the time and space to properly get your hands in the position, do a nice drop, get the follow through, you're going to want at least probably two or three seconds and in a game of rugby two or three seconds is a lifetime so whether you get that time or not is you know it's going to be up to the game who knows but all you can do is practice like i said so take these four tips go down to the field practice 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 get someone down there with you so they can kick the ball back to you and good luck that's all i've got to say so until next time guys have a great day subscribe for more There'll be more to come. Peace. And before I go, I better give you a demonstration, right? So let's see how we go.
stop me, I'm all the way up. Oh.